Greetings all. Well, this is going to be fairly um, new territory for me because this is going to have a bit of a political slant to it and by no means am I um, a political person. Probably by definition you would consider me to be an independent that leans democratic. Now the title of this video is Barack Obama will he make it a second term but before I get into that um, I want to preface what I'm about to say by saying this I did vote for the man I fully admit that um, and I don't regret voting for him now having said that when this whole thing started and you had three people it was whittled down to three people Barack Obama John McCain and Hillary Clinton I was banking on Hillary I felt that her time in the White House although it was as first lady um, I felt because of her uh, being a lawyer she was fairly acute on sticking with details, sticking to details and although some might think that her becoming president would be like her becoming president by proxy simply because um, her husband was president um, I felt to the contrary I thought this is a very knowledgeable person whose um, um, mental acuity took a back seat to no one regardless of their time in office or not but as it worked out it came to two so there was no choice in terms of of um, having to back one or the other who was left after um, Hillary um, left so now there you have, now you have John McCain and you have Barack Obama believe it or not this was a time where I was as close to voting for a Republican as I ever been um, I did not give in to the um, assertion that a number of people had that instead of some folks stating that you should vote for your conscience or from your conscience you had those that would tell you you should vote for your color and that was something that never set well with me um, for me you had to show something and initially I didn't see it with Barack Obama now with John McCain, John McCain was one of the few um, Republicans that I actually liked. I didn't care for um, his political stance on a number of things, um, his policy stances on a number of things, but I did think that he was a stand-up person and unlike many Republicans I felt that he um, 
as he stated before, was more about country than he was about party. And he'd be the first one um, to admonish his own party if he felt what they did was either incorrect, underhanded, or in some other way just wrong. And Arlen Specter, before he um, um, switched parties, you know, he was he was kind of the same, you know. So, um, like I was saying, the choice was now between two, between the two. And as I stated, with my believing that Hillary had the experience and all that, I also believe that John McCain had the experience. Um, at the end of the day, my choice was made um, not because of John McCain's experience, but for something else dealing with for something else dealing with McCain. And um, I won't go into that here. I'll just say. Um, it's not because of this person here on the screen. Um, although I would not have been um, um, too fond of her um, essentially leading the free world. Uh, but she wasn't the reason um, why I didn't vote for him. There was something else that um, put me off of him. Okay, so that's the end of my um, preface slash tangent if you will and I'd like to thank um, Ed for um, doing his video his part of the tag team POV which he spoke on very uh, eloquently I'm not quite the speaker uh, that he is but um, I'll try to muddle on through now um, as far as whether or not I believe um, Barack Obama will become president or will, re will remain president. Um, as of today, um, August 9th, 2011, I think it's too close to call. Um, a political feather in his cap no doubt will be that Osama was caught and killed on his watch. Now whether or not that'll, that'll carry enough political capital to get him over the hump, I don't know. That said, in terms of Barack Obama's effectiveness in the presidency. Um, I felt personally that he was trying to be too, um, I don't know if conciliatory is the word, but he was trying to, as he would say, as he would say reach across the aisle too much, in my point of view. Political um, satirist, um, comedian, and, and talk show host Bill Maher, who has the um, show Real Time with Bill Maher, which is really just an extension of um, his old show, Politically Incorrect. Um, he said something interesting a while ago, and what he said was. Obama might want to um, consider taking a page out of the Bush book. And for people that know Bill Maher, you know that this man was not a fan of that president. But then he went on to go into more detail as to um, what he was suggesting, which was nothing ideologically like Bush but just um, um, about pushing things through like Bush. Um, it's, and essentially what he was saying was whatever Bush 
basically wanted to get through, he got through. Uh, there were notable exceptions that Bill didn't mention, however, but um, at least not that I recall. Of the notable exceptions, of course, was um, Osama being caught on his watch, the divulgence of um, the weapons of mass destruction, and um, getting Harriet Myers into the uh, Supreme Court. Now, those are three very notable exceptions, but they're exceptions nonetheless. And um, there was a lot more stuff, which you know everybody can look up online and whatnot if they're, you know, curious. But um, there was a lot more stuff that he was able to push through than there was stuff that he wasn't able to get in. And that's because he basically steamrolled. And I think that that's what Bill Maher was saying. You know, he was saying, you know, okay, you tried to reach across the aisle. You tried to go that bipartisan route, you know, be the bigger person. Maybe now it's time to draw in the reins and, uh, you know, get a little mean. And um, my own view on the president, if you all pardon the um, sports analogy, not to trivialize anything, but, you know, I look at the president, I look at any president, basically, as um, a quarterback. And the question then becomes, what kind of quarterback do you want? Do you want a stand-in-the-pocket quarterback, a stay-in-the-pocket quarterback, or do you want a scrambling quarterback? In my view, you want a um, scrambling quarterback. Um, the stand-in-the-pocket quarterback He's waiting for things to unfold. He's waiting for things to develop. Um, he's counting on his defense to hold back the offense um, just so much so that he can, when something is re re when something is revealed to him, be able to perhaps throw that hail mary pass and perhaps be dead on target. Well the problem is, you know, you may be dead, but it won't be with the pass. Eventually, your defense, if you don't get that ball off in time, is going to collapse around you and you're going to get clobbered. Um, to put that in a political sense, it'd be pretty much like um, um, you've waited, you've waited, you've waited, and then essentially you've done nothing, and then not only have you given the opposing um, party um, 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 ammo to work against you, you haven't bolstered anybody up within your own party to back you the way they would want to. Now, a scrambling quarterback is someone that's not reactive. A scrambling quarterback is someone that's proactive. And a scrambling quarterback is going to be someone that makes things happen. Um, now, you may argue that um, with a scrambling quarterback, you're leaving yourself um, more vulnerable. Um, and in the bigger scheme of things, in the larger scheme of things, that's probably true. But nonetheless, what you're doing is you're showing... Um, your base and you're showing your opponents what you're willing to do, what you're willing to try, that you're going that extra mile to make that win, to make um, um, the play that you have to make to advance the country forward. And in my estimation, President Obama has been a um, um, quarterback that has you know stood in the pocket too long and it's rendered him um, at best ineffective and uh, if things don't change around um, significantly soon my um, my best guess is that um, he won't be doing, he won't be um, 
fulfilling a second term. Um, because if you just look at the news outlets themselves, not not a one is showing where um, there's any stat that shows that folks have confidence in them. You know, of course, you can't always believe stats. You can't always believe polls. But I think you talk around um, um, with friends amongst yourselves that you'll find out that, you know, the, the people who back him the most wish him the best, but they're not um, enraptured by the performance that's been thus far shown by him, or in some cases, some might say, not shown. So I don't know. I don't have the I don't have the answer. Um, I don't know if anybody does have the answer. Um, but I just wanted to uh, get my viewpoint out there. Um, basically, state things from my perspective. And um, anybody with any. Um, comments or questions that are not just um, derisive hyperbole because you are so entrenched um, um, with your own, I don't know, ideals or dogma or whatever you want to call it. You know, I'm willing to listen. I'm sure Ed's willing to listen on his side. I've already seen a number of comments on his side. Um, um, so far and uh, I don't know I'm always open for a discussion and whatnot so until next time see you then